Now, part of monetary policy is also uh, the various loan arrangements and lending arrangements that various central banks have had. And in our case, uh, we are done with, almost done with our exit because uh, there are smaller numbers of variable rate loans outstanding, but, but we're talking about, about 10, mil, 10 billion or something like that. So it's, it's, it's not really sort of relevant compared to what, I'm show, what we're showing here. And as you can see here, uh, if you measure what we did uh, in, and compared to what other central banks have done during this time period, looking at the ECB, the Federal Reserve, and the Bank of England, you can see here that on the one hand, after Lehman Brothers, we actually ended up being uh, uh, quite active and increased the size of our balance sheet uh, very, very rapidly and then ended up, uh, ended up actually relative, relative to GDP being above the others uh, for a while. But now, on the other hand, given the general economic conditions in the Swedish economy, given the state of the Swedish financial sector, which is very, very good, uh, it has been possible for us to sort of engineer the exit strategy uh, um, exactly the way we were talking about it about a year ago. And that's also why our balance sheet uh, has kept, uh, kept shrinking. Uh, and that's why we have the red graph below the other, the other graphs uh, presently. As some of you have noted uh, and, and, and know about, there's been a discussion in the past few weeks about what will happen or what has happened in the, in the, in the money market once all this extra liquidity has been withdrawn. This issue has been uh, discussed extensively in the banking sector, and we have kept a close eye on what is, what is going on in the payment system. And as far as we can judge, uh, this issue has now been settled and we have not had any major issues when it comes to uh, closing, closing the books at the end of, at the, end of the day. Uh, so that, that, that part of the exit has been, been taken care of. The other part of this is that when excess liquidity is reduced and when things are reverting back to normal, that will affect not only the overnight market or the tomorrow next market. Eventually, over time, it will also affect longer, longer maturities because the whole idea behind changing the, the, the ratio of liquidity to all other assets is to change it back to what we had, what we had before, and that will affect uh, longer maturity, maturities also to some, to some, to, to some extent. So uh, over time here, what market participants will have to do and are in the process of doing is to find new equilibria, not only in the overnight market, but, but also when it comes to longer, longer maturities. But in our judgment, uh, this, is, this process is ongoing and we don't really foresee any, any major difficulties at all with, with that. It's just that people have to talk to each other for a while uh, in order to find, where the, find the new a new price level, a price level such that, that we reach kind of a new, new equilibrium when it comes to, comes, comes to all, of, all of this. So uh, all in all, basically, uh, the story here is that we are full circle. Uh, and that's, of course, uh, something uh, which, is, uh, which is a very, very good thing, given that in the fall of 2008, uh, it was quite uh, dramatic, and, and, and we had to step in and do many, many things. Uh, so it's, um, it's very, very nice that we can put this episode behind us. And then, as always, the repo rate path is a forecast. It's not a promise. And as always, things can happen. And if you read Chapter 2 in the, in the Monetary Policy Report, there is one uh, scenario there talking about what might happen if you have a faster recovery in the Swedish economy. Uh, results are straightforward, and that will mean that rates will go up faster than, than, than according to our main scenario. And the other way around, if we have weaker developments uh, abroad in one form or the other, that will push uh, interest rate hikes uh, further, into the, further into the future. Now, uh, Pat will go through, through uh, one of the 
examples that we have in the report dealing with some of the, some of the quite tricky issues that, that one can reflect on uh, when, when one deals with how to think about what's going on outside the country when it comes to the level of interest rates in, 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 some, in, in the large economies and how that then in turn affects what's going on in the, in the Swedish economy. Perfect.